Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at Night. Okay, so it looks like Takashi 6 9 worst nightmare has now come true. I, I fear God, mm -hmm. and I fear the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Only two things I'm scared of in life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you can see, his fear was the feds, the FBI, and now that has come to fruition. So anyways, I know a lot of you guys may have seen headlines that he was picked up by the feds. A lot of you may have seen headlines that he's facing life in prison, but you probably only seen a headline and don't know a lot of the backstory. So if that is your case, I'm gonna bring you guys up to speed on everything that's going on and everything that he's being charged with and what the case is about because it looks like he's going to jail jail. And it looks like he's gonna run into people who have this mentality. What would you do if you were locked up with 69? The rapper 69, the one with the colored hair with the pretty little tattoos. 69 tattoo, the one with the pink, yellow, red hair. If you really think about it, can you imagine if you were locked up for the rest of your life and he was the only pretty little bitch that you got to see every single day in your jail, in your jail cell? He's not that bad looking now if you think about it if you're in jail for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I fear God mm -hmm. and I fear the FBI. I mean, I don't blame him. I would be scared too. Like, if you think about it, like if people got that mentality in the place that I got to spend the rest of my life at, yeah, I'd be scared too. And I mean, jail's not a pretty place to want to be spending your life anyways and i just hope that he will be all right he a gangster gangster so he should be able to hold his own for people who think like that but anyways so let me get into this article and bring you guys totally up to speed i'm gonna go to the blast because they have it you know everything down to a t on what's going on so it says, Takashi is facing life in prison for his part in a criminal organization that engaged in murder, robbery, and narcotics trafficking. According to the indictment obtained by The Blast, Takashi and his entourage members are accused of being in the Nine Tray Gangsta Bloods, which operates around Manhattan, the Bronx, and Brooklyn. According to documents, officials tracked Takashi on April 3rd to a robbery of a man from a rival gang. They tracked the hip-hop artist's cell phone and through his social media postings and surveillance footage, pinpointed him at the robbery. Later, when they executed a search warrant at Takashi's apartment, they recovered a stolen backpack labeled Scum as well as an AR-15 pistol. So as you can see, that's the backpack and the pistol that they recovered from him. Anyways, it says, officials also claim that Takashi sent video of the robbery to someone who posted on social media and it was used to track the rapper back to the alleged crime. I mean, you know, all criminals aren't smart and a lot of people get off on people knowing what they did and you sharing videos is what can, in essence, get you caught. So like it said, it said he himself sent video of the robbery to somebody and they posted it to social media. Anyways, law enforcement then traced Takashi to a shooting that occurred on April 21st after two men made derogatory comments to the rapper and then followed him and Shadi as they were driving. The documents claim Shadi got out the car and fired two shots at the vehicle while Takashi watched. So this is um, the still surveillance, I guess, of another incident that happened on April 3rd. And this is supposed to be, I guess, Takashi and his friends, I'm assuming. So anyways, it says, later in that night, they went to the Barclays Center where Takashi was scheduled to sing an entrance song for one of the fighters. During the event, a fight broke out between Takashi's entourage and a rapper Casanova's entourage and a shot was fired into the air. Surveillance footage links Takashi to all the events listed and was entered as exhibits by prosecutors to argue their case for why he should not receive bail. Two of the counts that Takashi is facing have a maximum sentence of life in prison. The documents allege Takashi and his associates comprised a criminal enterprise that participated in unlawful activity and engaged in violence with rivals of the gang. Um, and this is an, an exhibit of one of the court documents. It says, at all times relevant to this indictment, Jamel 
Jamel Jones, a.k.a. Mel Murda, Kifano Jordan, a.k.a. Shadi, Jensel Butler, a.k.a. Ish, or Aish, I don't know, Daniel Hernandez, a.k.a. Takashi 69 and Fahim Walter, a.k.a. Crippy. The defendants and others known and unknown were members and associates of the Nine Trey, Gangsta Bloods, Nine Trey, or the Enterprise, a criminal organization whose members and associates in gang and among, so I guess the rest probably I would assume would say gang activity. That's just an excerpt of the court, the official court document that they have. Um, it says, officials claim Nine Trey committed multiple shootings, robberies, and assaults against their rivals, including those who they deemed disloyal to the enterprise. Nine Trey is accused of participating in drug running, including selling heroin, fentanyl. I don't even know how to pronounce this crap. The only thing I know is marijuana, and I'm gonna move on. Documents claim Nine Trey committed an agreed, attempted, and threatened to commit acts of violence to protect and expand their narcotics business and to protect fellow members of the enterprise. There was a lawyer that was sitting in on this court proceeding and he kind of went to his Instagram to spill the details of what was going on and to tell people like, you know, the details. And according to him, he doesn't think that these charges will stick. I'm going to play his um, video of him saying that he don't think the charges will stick. And then later, I'm going to play his videos where he talked about exactly what he's seen in the court proceeding. Man, that uh, 6 9 post that I just did is getting a lot of views and comments. The Graham loves Takashi. Uh, I'm going to do another post a little bit later, talk about some more of the details, and I'm going to explain why I think this case against Takashi 6 9 is just total bullshit. The charges is flimsy. They're not going to stick. I think the kid beats the case. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to put up a post as soon as I get home explaining why that is. And to be clear, this is not Takashi's lawyer. This is just a lawyer that happened to be at court. Somebody told him that Takashi had a court hearing. He went into the court hearing and he heard the details. And this is his account that he thinks that it does not stick. I'm going to let you guys hear more of the charges and more of the allegations that the court has brought up against him. And then later, I'm going to play the things that he said he specifically heard about this case. So here's another excerpt of the actual official court documents. It says, Members and associates of Nine Trey committed and agreed, attempted, and threatened to commit acts of violence to protect and expand their narcotics business and to protect fellow members and associates of the enterprise. These acts of violence include an acts involving murder, acts involving robbery and extortion, and assault, intended either to protect the enterprise narcotics business, retaliate against members of rival gangs who had encroached on the enterprise narcotics business, to otherwise promote the standing and reputation of Nine Trey amongst rival gangs, or to promote the standing and reputation of Nine Trey members amongst other Nine Trey members. The document alleged that on April 3rd, Takashi, his manager, and two entourage members robbed some unknown rivals at gunpoint as part of a gang initiation. Officials claimed the robbery was for the purpose of gaining entrance to and maintaining and increasing position in nine. U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Berman said in a statement as alleged in the indictment, this gang, which included platinum-selling rap artist Takashi 69 wreaked havoc on New York City, engaging in brazen acts of violence, showing reckless indifference to others' safety. Members of the gang were allegedly involved in robberies and shootings, including a shooting inside a crowded Barclays Center and a shooting in which an innocent bystander was hit. Thanks to extraordinary work of HSI, ATF, and the NYPD, the defendants will now face justice in federal court. So it looks like he is in deep dog poo. To me, it sounds like they got enough on him for the charges to stick, but I'm no lawyer. The lawyer who um, was in the court proceedings to him, according to him, he doesn't feel like it will stick. But reading the excerpts and the things that they have on him, it looks like they have recordings of incidents. They have video footage of incidents all implicating Takashi and all showing that he was there with them pinging his phone and 
pinning him at locations and things like that. Um, but this lawyer who set into the proceedings, according to him, he said that this was more of a threat on Takashi's life. After um, he fired his team, his team was going to try to do something to him. So I'm going to let him speak about the things that he's seen. And then I'm going to go and read a little bit more of the article. I was in court today and I found myself in the same courtroom as rapper Takashi 69. Close with some of the guards in there, so they let me know, yo, 69's in the building, there's an arraignment going on, you might want to check. Okay, so as you can see, he's saying that, you know, the guards, I guess, told him that it was Takashi in there, so then that's how he ended up in the courtroom. Close with some of the guards in there, so they let me know, yo, 69's in the building, there's an arraignment going on, you might want to check. He wasn't supposed to be there, but he ended up there to hear what was going on and spill the tea for us. A lot of people in the comments were like, how is he there? He's not a um, a criminal defense attorney. Well, he told y'all why he was there, and then people still had that question. But, you know, whatever. Here is what the rest of the things that he had to say. Lawyer came up there, and he said, yo, they're trying to deny bail, saying that 6 9 is a threat. But really, what happened in this case is that on Friday, the feds came to 6 9 and they said to him that he should come into custody for protection because there's threats on his life. So, I mean, I guess according to him, the feds approached 6 9 and they wanted to put him in protective custody because his life was in danger. And then he says basically his life was in danger around him firing his team and them not being happy about it. So 6 ix lawyer was making an argument that my client's not the threat. The feds admitted that. The threat is actually on 6 9s life. And so he should get bail. He's not, he's not a threat to the community. They said they had a wiretap up on some, some of the people that 6 9 was working with some of the other defendants in this case. And those people, the ones who 6 9, who six nine fired, um, had indicated on that wiretap, you know, text messages and calls that they were going to go get 6 9 I mean, that's opposite of the excerpts that I read, the official court docs, but I don't know how court went. So he was there. I'm going to just take his word for it. Um, the feds actually quoted what was said and they say, yo, we're going to violate this guy. We're going to quote, super violate him. So hashtag super violate, man. That's, that was real crazy when I heard that. So what do you guys think? I mean, I think that's a possibility, but I also think what the court has indicted them for is truth too. So I feel like, yeah, his gang probably was mad that he fired them, but I also believe that the court has all of these things on him as well. But I'm going to finish letting this guy speak. Right before the judge was... Um... Right before the judge was about to give his verdict, you know, the thing went on for about 40 minutes and the judge kind of sat there quietly and he was thinking about it, thinking about all the arguments he had just heard and the whole courtroom fell silent. And I saw 6 9 kind of dip his head down, kind of like he was in prayer. And then when the judge uh, started talking, he was listening very closely. And, and then I just saw the look on his face when the judge denied bail, man. He was he was heartbroken. Interestingly, you know, when 6 9 walked in that courtroom, uh, he was shivering. He was shook. He was really scared. He looked like he had been shivering probably the whole time that he's been locked up and holding. What would you do if you were locked up with 69? If you really think about it, can you imagine if you were locked up for the rest of your life and he was the only pretty little bitch that you got to see every single day in your jail, in your jail cell? I mean, I'd be shivering too. And I'm going to read a little bit more of the uh, article. It says, as we reported, the hip hop star was taken into custody Sunday night by federal agents after a joint investigation by police, Homeland Security and the ATF slapped him with racketeering and weapons charges. This is something that they have been building for months. This is not something that just happened on the strength of him just firing his team. This is something that, that all of these agencies came together to bring down a criminal enterprise. So I'm going to read um, a little bit more. It says, along with the Billy Rapper, three of his associates, including his manager, Shadi, he and two other entourage members were recently arrested and charged with gang violence after a dust up outside a trendy Chinese restaurant following Takashi's probation victory. Takashi had vowed to stay out of trouble, but has found himself in violent situations, including a drive-by shooting while working on a music video with Kanye West in Beverly Hills. After his arraignment in court, Takashi's bail was denied and he will be detained in custody pending trial. So it looks like 
you know, the courts are deeming him a threat to society. They were wreaking havoc and they were not having it. So his bail was denied. Um, what do you guys think about this situation? What do you guys think about what's going on? You know, we always see him doing a lot of trolling and having that, you know, you can't touch me and feeling like he's above everybody. He felt like, you know, he's invincible. And now to see that he's going down for all of this, what do you guys think about that? Um, let's talk about it in the comments. All right, guys, that's all for this video. I just wanted to bring you guys up to speed and give you guys the specifics of what was going on so that you guys know exactly how serious this whole thing is because he looked like he is going to be facing some time either way. I don't know if he's going to be facing life, but it looked like he's going to have to do some time behind this. He's going to have to fess up to one of the charges you know like something out of all of the charges that they gave him maybe one night might not stick but it sounds like they got him for sure on videotape of robberies and you know seeing video footage and pinpointing his location to know that he was there so it looks like they have a, a quite 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 bit of information to build a very solid case but you never know you know when it comes to the right attorney the right lawyer the right prayer you never know what his circumstances and outcome could be but let me know what you guys think about this whole situation in the comment section be sure to like comment and subscribe um so that you can see the next updated celebrity news on the next video all right guys peace